Now we have talked so far about how to live in the love of God. Kwa hivyo tumekuisha kuzungumza jinsi ya kuishi katika upendo wa Mungu and how to have a right balance of the grace and love of God and the law. Na jinsi vile tunaweza tunavyoweza kuishi katika mzani kuhusu upendo wa Mungu na sheria ya Mungu. So that every day we can have strength from the Lord. Ya kwamba kila siku waweza kupokea nguvu kutoka kwa Mungu. And every day that we can declare God is love me so we can be more joyful. Na kila siku tunapotangaza kwamba Mungu anatupenda tunaweza tunaishi katika furaha zaidi. Now when we know that God's love is not just in the mind but we say God loves me is so wonderful. Na sasa unaposema kwamba Mungu anakupenda sio tu kwenye akili lakini unaiweka hata kwenye mazoezi unjue kwamba Mungu ni maajabu. I can enjoy my life I can enjoy everything. Ninaweza nikaburudika maisha yangu na kila kitu. And everything I do for God God is very happy. Na chochote kile ninachofanya kwa ajili ya Mungu Mungu ana furaha. If I have a pure heart for God God likes me. Kama niko na moyo wazi Mungu ananipenda. So I can be happy. Kwa hivyo naweza kuwa na furaha. It's very important because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Ni muhimu kwa sababu furaha ya Mungu ndio nguvu zetu. Every day we say God loves me and we have more joy and more strength. Kila siku unaposema Mungu anakupenda unakuwa na nguvu na furaha zaidi. So that part is about the love of God and the relationship with God. Hiyo inahusisha upendo wa Mungu na uhusiano ulio nao na Mungu. Now the second part is about how to clear garbage in our lives. Ya pili ni jinsi ya kutoa takataka zote katika maisha yetu. Because even if we have the love of God but if we have a lot of garbage and sins and negative emotions, all this will affect us. Basi kama ndio tuweza ishi katika upendo wa Mungu na bado tuko na takataka nyingi katika maisha yetu ya yote yatatuadhimi. Anything that destroy our life we have to get rid of. Chochote ambacho unafikiri kinaweza kikaribu maisha yako unakiondoa kabisa. Let me ask you do you like to eat garbage? Hebu nikuulize ungelipenda kukula takataka uchafu. Do you like to eat garbage? No you know right? Su. Su. Ungelipenda kula su? Anasema cabbage uchafu wazungumuze zile mboga za majani za kula za kula ni jini garbage sio tunazungumza ya ya kula ni cabbage tunazungumza ile ya jia garbage uchafu jamani do you want eat cabbage do you want eat cabbage ungelipenda kula uchafu garbage is bad for us right yani ule uchafu unaleta matatizo So there are a lot of bad things in our life we have to get rid of those. Kuna vitu katika maisha yetu lazima tuviondoe. And then the third part is how to train ourselves to serve God with power. Na sehemu nyingine ni ile sehemu tunasema kufundisha watu kutumikia Mungu ama kutia Mungu kazi kwa uwezo, kwa kwa nguvu. Now if a person says God loves me but he continues to sin. Mtu anaposema kwamba Mungu anampenda lakini anaendelea kudumu katika dhambi. He's not going to able to enjoy God's love. Huyo mtu hawezi kuendelea kusherehekea upendo wa Mungu. He won't have strength from God's love. He won't have strength from God's love. Hawezi kupata nguvu kutoka katika upendo wa Mungu. We should have the concept that sins are like cancer. Ni lazima tuwe na mawazo ya kujua kwamba dhambi ni kama saratani. Unajua saratani? Kanza. Kanza ni kizungu. Ni cancer. You know cancer? You know you all know cancer? Jinsi mnajua kanza, si ndio? Do you know do you know cancer? Mnajua kanza? Okay. So sins are very destructive. Kwa hivyo dhambi ni aribifu zaidi. The the first thing we need to understand is the destructiveness of sin. Jambo ambalo twafaa kuielewa ni kwamba je dhambi zina uharibifu kiasi gani? Now in Galatians chapter 6 verse 8 katika kitabu cha Wagalatia sura ya sita na mstari wa nane Wagalatia sura ya sita mstari wa nane We saw that he who sows to please the first will from the first will reap destruction Tumeona kwamba yule anayepanda kwa kujifurahisha yeye binafsi atavuna uharibifu And also Ephesians they talk about do not give in to the devil Na pia give a foot Football to the devil. Na pia Paulo anasema katika Waefeso kwamba tusimpe shetani ruhusa ya kuingia maishani mwetu. Because sins will give a 
footfall to the devil. Kwa sababu unapotenda dhambi, hizo dhambi zitaleta mwanya katika maisha yako ambapo shetani ataingilia. And in John chapter 10 verse 10, na katika kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 10 na mstari wa 10, it says that the thief came to steal and to kill and to destroy. Ya kwamba mwivi huja kwa kuua, kuwaribu na kuangamiza. But Jesus came to give abundant life. Lakini Yesu amekuja ili tuwe na uzima wa milele. So whenever we sin, kwa hivyo tunapotenda dhambi, we give the devil a foothold, tunampa shetani ruhusa, and he will come to steal and to kill and to destroy. Na shetani atakuja ili aibe, auwe na aribu. It's very important to understand that any sin can do destruction. Ni vizuri kuelewa kwamba dhambi zozote zinaweza kuleta uharibifu. That um, in the book of James, chapter 2, katika kitabu cha Yakobo, sura ya pili, it says that if we break one commandment, we have break, broken all commandments. Ya kwamba unapofunde sheria moja, inamana kwamba umefunde zote kwenye kitabu cha Yakobo. What does that mean? Yu inamanisha nini? For instance, if someone just dislikes someone, kwa mfano, kama umekana mtu na kumbe haumpendi huyo mtu, now, has it ever happened that you don't like someone, you look at a person, you don't like him? Je, katika maisha yako, ni suwali jamani mjibu. Katika maisha yenu, kuna wakati ambapo umemuona mtu, napo muona hivi, unasema haka uyusi mpendi, unamutukia. Maybe that person has something bad about him. Kwa mfano yu mtu, kuna wazekano akona kitu kibaya kwake. But still, as Christians, we should learn to love them. Ijapo kuwa huyo mtu wana matatido yake na ubaya wake, lakini sisi kama wakuristo ni lazima tuwapenda. If we dislike him, kama hata wapenda, we will make our heart unhappy. Tutafanya mbewe yetu isikuwe na furaha. If there is someone you don't like, it will make your heart unhappy, right? Kama kuna mtu ambaya hata kufanya usiwe na furaha, na mana kwa mwe wako hata kuwa na furaha. It will make it hard for us to pray. Basi itakuwa mbumu kwe tu sisi kuomba. It will make it hard for us to serve God. Na sasa itakuwa mgumu sisi yata kumtumikia mgumu. It seems we lose strength and joy. Ina manisha kwamba basi mguvu zetu na furaha yetu itapotea. So this is one book of James chapter 2 says that one sin, when you have broken one commandment, you have broken all commandments. Sisi mbicho ambacho mwanishi kata kitabu cha Yakobo usura ya pili ya natuambia kwamba unapofunja sheria moja, umefunja sheria zote. So when we, you know, like for instance, we cannot forgive someone, Kwa mfano kama hatu wetu, tuka musamehe mtu. We will have no joy and no strength. Hatuta kuwa na furaha na hatuta kuwa na amani. And then we cannot love God with all our hearts. Na sasa hatu wetu tuka mpenda mungu kwa miyo zetu zote. And then we continue to hate this person. Tuta hengalia kumtukia mtu huyu. And then we will, you know, we will lose motivation. Na sasa tuta poteza ule mtu cheo. And we might say things to hurt the person. Na tunaweza kufu kuongea mambo ambaye naweza kuadhiri watu hawa. Have you noticed that any one sin can affect a whole attitude? Je, kusha wai jua kwamba dhambi zozote zile ndogo zitaweza kubadilisha na kuwarimu mtazamo wako wote. Have you noticed that? Is that true? Yeah. Umegundua hayo? Yeah. Any negative thinking mawazo ya yote ya kinyume Whenever, whenever we don't like the church or the pastor or some of the Christian, kwa mfano hatubendi kanisa fulani, hatubendi mchungaji fulani ya mamukristo fulani, it will take away our joy and our strength. Mambo haya ya tatuondo, ya tatoa upendo wetu na mbubu zetu. And one sin will lead to another sin. Na sasa dhambi moja hii itatuongoza kwenye dhambi zikine tenu. When we dislike something, someone, then we will, sometimes we want to, and yell at that person or be angry with that person. Unapo, kama haumpendi mtu, kuna wazekano umelepena kumpigia kelele, kumwabia maneno machungu. And we might hurt the person. Na kwa mfatu na hitha basa tukamuteruhi mtu huyo. By words or by action. Kwa maneno na matendo yetu. And we'll give, make us weak in the Lord. Na sasa hiyo ya tufanya tunakua wa daifu katika buwana. Anyone who's serving God has anger in the heart can hear strength. Je, mtu ambaye anamtumikia mungu, lakini akona asira moyoni mwake, anaweza kupata mungu za mungu kweli? If we have anger, can we have strength? Kama tuna asira, unaweza kuwa na mungu za mungu? No. Because all sins block the relationship with God. Kwa sababu dhambi zote, sinazuhia uhusiano wetu na mungu. 
When we have any sin, it will, you know, it will break the relationship, the close relationship with God. Kama tunadhabi zo zote, zitavunja usiano wetu na mungu. So it's very important that we understand the serious consequence of sins. And also some people make excuses and they think negative emotions are not sins. Na watu wengine huwa wanatoa vigi sababu wanafikiria kwamba wanapokuwa na hisia kinyume kwamba sio dhambi. For instance, some people they always worry and they don't think that as a sin. Kwa mfano watu wengine wao wako tuna shauku na hawafikiri kwamba kuwa na hiyo pia ni dhambi. When we worry, we are not trusting in God. Kama wewe una mawazo mabaya ama mawazo kinyume wewe haumpendezi Mungu. We are saying God cannot help me. Unasema kwamba Mungu hawezi kunisaidia. When we say God cannot help me then we have no strength from God. Unaposema kwamba Mungu hawezi kunisaidia na maana kwamba hauna nguvu za Mungu. So worry is a sin. Kwa hivyo pia wewe kuwa na mawazo ni dhambi. Now to me my definition of sin is like this. Kwa yeye ana tafsiri dhambi hivi. Whenever we fall short of the glory of God, we have sinned. Popote pale unapopungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu, umekwishakutenda dhambi. If we show the full glory of God, tunapoonyesha utukufu wote wa Mungu, we will be like the Christians in heaven. Sisi tutakuwa kama wakristo ambao tumekwishafika mbinguni. Full of joy and strength. Tuko na furaha na nguvu. Always one of the best people. Na tumegelipenda kuwabariki watu. Full of love and motivation. Tunao upendo na tumechochewa zaidi. When Christians don't live like that, kama wakristo hawawezi kuishi hivyo, it's already sin. Hiyo yote tayari ni dhambi. When you look around the Christians around you, unapowatazama wakristo ambao wako karibu na wewe, do you find many Christians worrying? Je, unaona wao wakristo ni kwa kwamba wana mawazo mengi, heavy with burden, ni kama wamechoka kwa sababu wamebeba mizigo mizito, unhappy, na ni wakristo ambao hawana furaha, no strength, na hawana nguvu. Are they glorifying God? Je, wakristo kama hao wanamtukuza Mungu? Are they glorifying God? No. They already are sinning. Tayari wao wako katika dhambi. So when we fall short of the glory of God, that we don't show the glory of God the joy, the love and the freedom of God then we are already sinning but somebody will say well then how can I you know, avoid this I, we all are weak basi jambo ambalo tunapotokelezea unaanza kusema hili jambo utalizuia namna gani maana si sio tu adhaifu I want to say this, we can never be perfect in this world. Nataka kuambia hivi ya kwamba hatuwezi tukawa kamilifu katika dunia hii. But we can overcome the sins as soon as the sins come up. Lakini tunaweza tukashinda dhambi wakati dhambi zinapo ibuka. And we can try our best to live in the love of God so we have more love and joy. Na tunaweza kupiga kufanya hivi kuishi katika upendo wa Mungu ili tukue na na furaha ya Mungu. We cannot be perfect. Hatuwezi tukawa wakamilifu. But when we are try our best. Lakini tunapojaribu kadri ya uwezo wetu. And God is happy with us. Na Mungu anakuwa na furaha na sisi. That if every day we have the joy and the strength of the Lord, ya kwamba kila kitu tunazo nguvu zinazotoka katika furaha ya Bwana. And when any simple thoughts come to us, he may will take care of it. Na sasa mawazo mabaya yote yanapokuja tunayashughulikia. We are already having victory. Tayari tumekuwa kwishakuwa na ushindi. If we fail in anything, na basi tuki tukishinda jambo lolote, we ask God to forgive us. Tunaomba Mungu atusamehe. And I'm going to tell you how to do that. Na pia nitawafundisha jinsi ya kufanya hivyo. It's all from the Bible. Yote iko katika maandiko. Now first I want to say that excuses people have for sinning. Nataka kuzungumza kuhusu vigi sababu ambavyo watu wanavyo zinavyosababisha kufanya dhambi. Some people will say other people are doing that. Na ndio tutasema kwamba what Some people are doing that there's they are sinning too. Aha, watu watatua sababu wa sinne kwamba tunatenda dhambi hii kwa sababu tumeona fulani mtu fulani akifanya. Other people are lying too. Na hata watu wengine wamekuwa wakinena uongo. Other people are worried too. Na hata watu wengine wamekuwa na shauku. So what is wrong with that? Kwa hivyo tatizo la hilo ni nini? This is an excuse of many people. Ya kwamba hivi ni 
The thing other people are doing so it's okay for me to do it. But we have to be very clear about this. Even if the whole world is sinning and we know that it is a sin, we don't want to commit that sin. Hata kama dunia nzima inafanya tendo hilo na ile mitendo la dhambi pia nasi tusiendelee kufanya hivyo. Even when you find many Christians cheating, we don't cheat. Hata unapopata mkristo akinena uongo, wewe nawe usinene uongo. Because we know God sees our heart. Kwa sababu tunajua kwamba Mungu anaona anaona mioyo zetu. He searches the heart of all people. Yaani Mungu anatafuta mioyo za kila mtu. He knows our heart now. Anajua hata moyo wako sasa hizi. So when we know the sins are destructive, kwa hivyo unapojua kwamba dhambi zinaleta uharibifu. And one thing we want to learn is to hate sin. Kitu ambacho lazima tujifundishe ni kutukia dhambi. Hate sin. Chukia dhambi. But many people give excuses. Lakini watu wengi hupenda viji sababu. Because for instance some people will say, well, people are not good to me so I worry. Kwa hivyo mtu anaweza kusema kwamba watu hata sio wema kwangu sasa mimi ninao ninayo mawazo mengi. And they think worry is okay. Na wanafikiria kwamba unapokuwa na shauku ni vizuri. But we know that worry is falling short of the glory of God. Tunajua basi kama ni hivyo umepungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu. So worry is a sin. Kwa hivyo hilo ni dhambi. And worry can destroy my whole life. Na hilo jambo linaweza likaribu maisha yako yote. Any sin can destroy our whole life. Ya kwamba dhambi zozote zinaweza zikaribu maisha yako. So worry oh how how will things be it's difficult sasa unakuwa na kushangaa mambo haya yatakuwaje mambo yamekuwa magumu and then we'll lose hope na sasa unapoteza tumaini we we'll lose strength unapoteza nguvu so we need to know that any sin must destroy will destroy its destructive tuna inafaa uelewe kwamba dhambi zozote ziko zinaweza kuharibu maisha yako when we face it then we can overcome the sin lakini kama tunasikiza kutoka kwa Mungu tunaweza kushinda dhambi. Now first I would like to share with you how come now I face sins, you know I really put all my effort into reject any sin. What what happened to me? What changed me? Anataka kushiriki na nyinyi kuhusu jinsi mambo yalivyomtendekea ndivyo akaweza kushinda dhambi zozote ambazo zinakuja katika maisha yake. Before I experienced the Holy Spirit, I found that from time to time I sinned. Yeye kabla ajaza na Roho Mtakatifu aligundua kwamba kila wakati alikuwa na tena dhambi. Now I did try to overcome sins. Ndio alijaribu kushinda dhambi, but many times I found that I was weak. Lakini kila wakati aligundua kwamba yeye ni mdhaifu. And in many ways I fell. Na sasa katika njia nyingi alishindwa. And when I experienced the Holy Spirit when Carlos and Claudia laid hand on me, na sasa alipohisi nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu wakati mwingilisi alipomwekea mikono. I experienced the great love of God. Yeye alihisi upendo mkuu wa Mungu. And the freedom in God. Na uhuru ulioko ndani ya Mungu. Actually I felt like in heaven. Na sasa akahisi nikana kwamba amefika kule mbinguni. I said God you are so wonderful. Na akasema Mungu wewe ni wa ajabu. I don't want anything to destroy my relationship with you. Sitaki jambo lolote likaribu uhusiano wangu na wewe. I want to spend more time praying. Nataka nichukue muda wangu mwingi katika maombi. I want to spend more time building up a good relationship. Nataka nichukue vipindi vyangu vingi kujenga uhusiano wangu na wewe Mungu. And when I saw that when I prayed for people many people were healed and the life changed. Na sasa nilipoona hivyo akaanza kuombea watu na watu wakaponya na maisha yao yakabadilishwa. And I said I want to make the best of my life. Akasema nataka maisha yangu yakuwe mema zaidi. I don't want anything to destroy my life. Sitaki jambo lolote likaharibu uhusiano wangu na Because sin will destroy my spiritual life. Manake dhambi ndogo itaharibu uhusiano wangu na Mungu. And will destroy my ministry. Na pia hiyo itaharibu huduma wangu wote. So I had the motivation. Sasa akawa na kule kutochewa. To overcome any sin. Ili kushinda dhambi zile zozote. Now this sins came in a way sometimes in a way I did not notice at first. Aha, is it now be kwa kipindi cha kwanza ziliingia katika ile njia ambayo sikuelewa. I use an illustration. Jatumia mfano. One time a, a number of pastors were sharing together, sharing about the ministry. Basi kuna kipindi fulani ambacho wachungaji walikuwa wamekusanyika wakianza kuongea kuhusu huduma wao. And some pastors have wonderful ministry. Na sasa wachungaji wengine wako na huduma ama makanisa ambayo ni mazuri zaidi. And when they share I was very thankful. 
Na sasa walipo kwa kishiriki yeye alishukuru sana. But there was one pastor who shared. Lakini kuna mtungaji ambaye naye alizungumza kuhusu huduma yake. When I heard what he shared, aliposikiliza kile alichokuwa akishiriki, I thought his ministry was not so great. Alifikiria kwamba kwa sababu kutokana na maongezi yake huduma yake haikuwa mzuri. I thought his spiritual life was not so strong. Akafikiria kwamba maisha yake ya kiroho hayapo na nguvu. So in my heart I have a despise for him. Na sasa katika moyoni mwake akaanza kumdharau. Immediately the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Na sasa wakati huo Roho Mtakatifu akamnenea. Who are you to judge? Wewe ni nani uhukumu? It's me who changed you. Ni mimi niliyekubadilisha. And he was also changed by me. Na pia yeye alibadilishwa na mimi. Who are you to compare and criticize? Basi wewe ni nani ambaye unafananisha na kuleta hukumu? After experience and in feel the Holy Spirit I became very sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Na sasa katika hiyo akawa msikilivu sana kwa sauti ya Roho Mtakatifu. And also I have joy all day long when I pray. Na sasa sasa yeye anakuwa na furaha kila wakati anapoomba. So any moment I have this voice of the Holy Spirit I notice it. Sasa kila wakati anaposikia sauti hii anajua kwamba ni Roho Mtakatifu. I notice it take away my peace and joy. Na sasa anagundua kwamba Ah, furaha yake na nguvu zake zinaondolewa. I notice it make my heart heavy. Kwa sababu ile wazo alokuwa nalo moyo wake ukawa mzito. Immediately I responded to God. Lakini sasa akamuitikia Mungu. God I'm sorry for that. Akamwambia Mungu ninaomba msamaha kwa hilo. I have no right to criticize. Mimi sina uhuru, sina haki yoyote ya kufanya maisha. Naomba usamehe dhambi zangu. And help me to appreciate his change. Ukanisaidie ili kwamba nikapate kushukuru kwa sababu ya mabadiliko. No matter how small the change was. Haijalishi mabadiliko haya yatakuwa madogo kiasi gani. So basically the difference now is this. Basi utofauti ni huu. I see that any small sin is destructive. Ninaona kwamba dhambi zote ndogo ni haribifu. Even when nobody sees it, ijapokuwa watu wengine hawaoni. I just have it in my heart. I just have this thought in my heart. Akawa na hili wazo kwenye moyo wake. It will destroy my relationship with God. Ya kwamba hili jambo linaweza kuharibu uhusiano wake na Mungu. So I immediately change and ask God to forgive me. Sasa yeye alibadilisha na kuomba Mungu msamaha and respect the person. Na kuanza kumtii yule mtu. Now another example. Mfano mwingine. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, I was courageous to tell many people and pray for many people. Basi alipo jana Roho Mtakatifu akaona kwamba ako na ujasiri wa kuombea watu na kuwasaidia watu. But I was serving as a pastor in a traditional church and I was teaching in a traditional seminary. Na sasa alikuwa akifanya kazi kama mchungaji kwenye kanisa la kitamaduni na pia alikuwa mwalimu kwenye shule ya Biblia ya kitamaduni. So there were negative responses from some people. Na sasa kuna watu ambao hawakuwa wanampenda. And there was one person who really wanted to get me out. He wanted to push me out from the traditional church. Na kulikuwa na mtu ambaye alikuwa anatamani sana amuondoe huyu bwana katika ule huduma. When I knew about this, actually I asked the pastor. There was a pastor, the pastor was for me, and I asked the pastor, will they stop persecuting me? Na sasa alipogundua mambo haya, akatumia mchungaji mwingine kwenda kuambia kwamba waachane na yeye wasimudhe haki. The head pastor of the church said to me, they won't stop persecuting you until they kick you out from the church. Na yule mchungaji akawaambia, akamwambia, hao jamaa hawataanza kukusumbua mpaka uhakishe kwamba umekufukuza kwenye kanisa hili. Because they cannot accept the work of the Holy Spirit. Kwa sababu hawawezi wakakubali kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu. But this persecution mainly came from one person. Lakini basi mambo haya yote yalikuwa yanafanywa na mtu mmoja. And then this thought came to my mind. Na sasa wazo hili likakuja kwenye akili yake. One day he has to stand in front of God. Siku moja atasimama mbele za Mungu. He could be punished by God. Anaweza kuadhibiwa na Mungu. And he could have sickness from God too. Na pia anaweza hata kushikwa na magonjwa kwa sababu ya Mungu. The moment I had this thought. Na sasa alipokuwa na hilo wazo. God spoke to me. Mungu akamnenea. He's for God to judge. Ni Mungu anayefaa kuhukumu. You are not to judge. Wewe haufai kuhukumu. So I ask God to forgive me. Kwa hivyo uliza Mungu akusamehe. And I want to change my mind. Na nataka kubadilisha mawazo yangu. I want to bless the person. Nataka kubariki watu. And then I pray for the person. Na sasa nikawaombea watu. I said Lord help the person to be faithful to you. Nikaambia Mungu hebu usaidie huyu mtu akae mwaminifu 
kwako even though he doesn't accept the inferior holy spirit ijapokuwa hakubali kujaza roho mtakatifu i pray that you will help her to be faithful in her way ninaomba mungu kumsaidie akae mwaminifu katika njia yako so that when she sees god one day ili kwamba siku ile atakapomuona mungu god will praise her as a good and faithful servant mungu atamuona kama mtendakazi ambaye ni mwaminifu na mwema kabisa now i notice that this thought came to me again and again niligundua kwamba wazo hili lilijia mara nyingi zaidi and i kept blessing this person lakini mimi niliendelea kumbariki mtu huyu i kept putting down the feeling of dislike for her niliendelea basi kuweka chini yale mawazo yangu kinyume kumuhusu huyu jamaa i noticed that sometimes i have negative feelings towards some people na niligundua kwamba kila wakati ninapokuwa na mawazo mabaya kwa watu wengine sometimes when i'm washing dishes ili kwamba ninaposha viombo kule nyumbani or walking ama ninatembea or praying ama niombe suddenly i thought of someone ninaanza kuanza kufikiria kufikiria kitu kingine that i don't like na hapo sipendezi or someone that hurts me ama mtu mwingine ananiadhiri and then i i notice i have some negative feeling na sasa nagundua kwamba niko na mawazo kinyume every time i thought of these people kila wakati ninapoona watu hawa instantly the holy spirit told told me to change my attitude roho mtakatifu ananiambia nibadilishe mtazamo wangu so i said to god lord help me kwa hivyo ninamwambia mungu mungu nisaidie and the one key to change our attitude is to have compassion on people aha jambo la msingi ambalo linaweza kusaidia kwamba usiadhirike na watu ni wewe kuwapenda watu people who hurt us have been hurt by people watu ambao wanatuadhiri ama watu ambao wanatujeruhi wao tayari walikwisha kujeruhiwa na watu wengine they yell at us they have been yelled at by other people wale watu wanaokupigia wewe kelele wanaokupigia kelele kwa sababu wao ya kwanza walikwisha kupigiwa kelele so the lord moved me to have compassion on them kwa hivyo wewe hao watu uwapende jinsi vile mungu alimsaidia akapenda wale watu ambao hawakumpenda every time i think of them kila wakati ninapofuaza kwa usu i would bless them nita wabariki pray for them nita waombea and ask her to change me na niulize Mungu anibadilishe so if i have a chance to see them again ili kwamba nitakapokuwa tena na na nafasi ya kuwaona tena i will be nice to them nitakuwa mtu mwema kwao i will say nice things to them nitasimungumza maneno mauzu mazuri kwao and i ask her to change my attitude na niulize Mungu akabadilishe mtazamo that i will even learn to love them ili kwamba tukajifundishe kuwapenda to like them kuwapenda So God worked in my heart many many times. Kwa hivyo Mungu alizungumza katika moyo wangu kwa vipindi when I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit na niliposikia sauti ya Roho Mtakatifu. The main thing now compared to the past. The main thing now compared to the past. Aha, jambo la muhimu ukilifananisha na yale yaliyopita ya kitambo. I know the destructiveness of sins. Alijua uharibifu wa dhambi. I know God doesn't like me to sin. Alijua Mungu hataki atele dhambi. So I hate to sin. Aka akachukia dhambi. And I found out when I hate to sin. Na anapata aka, aka, kwamba anapochukia dhambi. When I would obey God, na anapomtii Mungu, it is not hard to change my thinking and attitude. Ya kwamba sio vigumu kubadilisha mtazamo wake na hata mawazo yake. I use another illustration will be helpful to many men. Anatumia sasa mfano ambao utakuwa muhimu sana kwa kwa watu wengi. Sometimes when I saw a very beautiful lady or very sexy lady, ama kwa mfano unapoona binti ambaye anavutia sana. Now in my Bible college one time one schoolmate of mine was driving a car and we were on the road. Aha, alipokuwa katika shule ya Biblia na kuna mwanafunzi mmoja wao alipokuwa akiendesha gari nao alikuwa kwenye barabara. And we saw a lady on a road the, the lady was walking forward. Na sasa wakaona binti fulani pale barabarani aliyekuwa mbele. This driver who is also a Bible college student. Huyu dereva alikuwa akiendesha gari na mmoja wapo wa wanafunzi katika shule ya Biblia. After he passed the, the woman, alipompita yule binti He turned his head to look at the face of the woman. Alipompita yule binti akageusa kichwa chake akamtazama akuona sura ya yule binti. Now many people do not think that this is a sin. Watu wengi wanafikiria kwamba hii sio dhambi. Because he want to see how beautiful or not beautiful this woman is. Kwa sababu anataka kuona huyu bae, huyu bae. Mwanamke. Huyu dada 
si mwanamke huyu dada anavutia ana, anavutia kiwango gani mzuri anapendeza ama hapendezi now i've seen many beautiful women girls and sexy women sexy girls ye ameona eh, wadada wa kupendeza wanaovutia and I want to say that in the past I have failed many times that I let simple thoughts stay in my mind. Na hata yeye anasema kwamba vipindi vilivyopita alikuwa anashindwa katika jambo hili manake pia yeye alikuwa anavutiwa na hao mabinti. But now when I see how wonderful how loving God is. Lakini sasa anapoona jinsi Mungu alivyowaacha. And how sin would destroy my life. Na vile dhambi zinaweza kuharibu maisha yake. In me I say I don't want this thought to stay in my mind. Basi anasema kwamba sitaki wazo hili likabaki I want to put down any thought of lust. I just want to bless this person. So this is a thought for many people. Do we have this lust toward the opposite sex? Now also I want to say this too many people they might do masturbation you know Basi kuna vipindi vingine ambavyo asua sana watu wa kiume hata mabinti pia wanatumika wanataka kufanya mchezo wa ngono lakini hawafanyi wakitumia vile Mungu alivyoumba mtu anatumia kitu kingine ili kwamba labda tatumia jambo gani Okay now many people were a problem overcoming their sin Basi watu watakuwa na watu wengi wako na matatizo ya kushinda dhambi kama hii now can you imagine Jesus masturbating? Can you imagine Jesus masturbating? Because, because sex is for the marriage. Because sex is for the Do we treasure our holiness in God? That when we have this sinful thought, we will say our life is much more precious. And if we treasure our life, and treasure God, and treasure our ministry, then we don't want anything to destroy it. Because it will take away our clear conscience. We will feel guilty inside. And I want to say it is possible to overcome any kind of sin. Okay, now I'm going to tell you the steps that God gave me. Five steps to victory. You can write this down. Five steps to victory. First step is aware. That we are aware of our sinful thoughts. Second is Believe that is destructive. First, aware. I know that we we become aware. Oh, I dislike the person. I have lust. I hate this person. So aware. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so aware. The first way. Ewo ya kwanza ni kwamba uwe na ufaham ujue ya kwamba. Okay. The second is they want to I'll I'll go through the five points just write down and then I'll explain. Anasema msiandike tu chini atazirejelea moja baada ya nyingine akieleza. So first I know I have a sinful thought. Kwa hivyo ya kwanza tumesema ujue kwamba uko na wazo la dhambi. Number 2, ya pili, I know it's destructive. Unajua kwamba hiyo dhambi ni haribifu. It can destroy my life. In a way they can rebu maisha yako. Number three. Ya tatu. Kisha ya pili ujue kwamba yu dhambi neza kwa rebu maisha yako. Sasa ya tatu. What does the Bible tell me to do? Biblia inanambia nifanye nini? 
Biblia inanambia nifanye nini Number four, pray to have strength. Ya nime, omba ili uwe na nguvu. Omba ili uwe na nguvu. Uni ya nime. Number five. Ya tano. Choose to obey. Hebu, ya tano nasema chagua kuti. Chagua kuti. Okay. Now I'm going to explain the process. Sasa anataka kueleza mambo hayo yote. For instance, someone is not nice to us. Kwa mfano, kuna mtu ambaye sio mwema kwetu. They say something to attack us. Na huyo mtu anazungumza kitu ili kutujeruhi sisi. Or they spread some gossip. Ama wanaeneza uvumi wa uongo. And then we know it and then we have a response of anger. Na sasa sisi tunaitikia katika hali ya hasira. And then we become aware I'm angry. Na sasa wewe unajua ya kwamba umekasirika. Now, if we stay in the joy of the Lord all day long. Kama tutaishi katika upendo wa Mungu siku nzima. When we wake up we always thank God, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Unapoamka asubuhi unamsifu Mungu na sema asante Mungu. And we are filled with the joy of the Lord. Na sasa tukisha jazwa na furaha ya Bwana. And any time we have any anger we will notice it. Na kila wakati ambapo utakuwa na hasira utagundua tu. And then we become aware I'm about to sin. Na sasa utajua kwa sababu huyu mtu amenikasirisha na ninataka nimchape asinikasirishe. Utajua tu mapema nikimchapa itakuwa ni dhambi. The key to overcoming sin sasa ufunguo wa kushinda dhambi hizi is to stop it when the simple thought is in our mind. Ni wewe kuachana na ile wazo wakati tunapokuja tu katika akili zako unaliacha. Unaachana nani? Now for many people when they know that someone is attacking them, na kwa watu wengi wanapogundua kwamba kuna mtu ambaye anawafuata, they may like yell at the person wanaweza labda kupigia yule mtu kelele or even hate the person ama wamchukie wa mtu huyo. They didn't know they were angry. Hawakujua kwamba wamekasirika. And they kept responding. Na wanaendelea tu kuitikia. But instead, when we have a mature Christian life, lakini tunapokuwa na ukristo ambao umekomaa, when we have the joy of the Lord every day, tuko na furaha ya Mungu kila siku. Then whenever we have any anger or negative thinking, wakati wote ambapo tunaweza kuwa na asira, We know that we are about to sin. Tunajua tu ya kwamba tuko karibu kutenda dhambi. So all day long we can stay in a condition of joy. Kwa hiyo siku yote nzima tunaweza tunaweza ishi katika furaha. Whenever we notice that we are not happy, popote ambapo unagundua kwamba umekasirika, we ask why. Unajiuliza ni kwa nini nimekasirika? Mbona sina furaha? I use an illustration. Natumia mfano. I heard this testimony one time Someone share with me about his sin. Nimesikia ushuhuda huu kuna siku ambayo mmoja ambaye mtu alizungumza ushuhuda huu kwangu kuhusu dhambi zake. He said he got angry easily with his wife. Huyu jamaa alisema kwamba yeye huwa anakasirika haraka sana na mke wake. I said why are you angry with your wife? Akamuuliza mbona mkeo basi unamkasirikia? Because he said that because when I came home my wife did not have the food ready for me. Kwa sababu akamwambia ili mkasirikia kwa sababu niliporejea kule nyumbani si kupata mke wangu ameniandalia chakula. So I asked him why are you angry? Nikamuuliza je ni kwa nini umekasirika? What do you expect? Wewe ulikuwa unatarajia nini? So he said, I expect my wife to really take good care of me ahead of time. Akamwambia, mimi ninatarajia mke wako anitunze mbele ya muda. So she would do everything perfectly ili kwamba yeye afanye mambo kwa muda kwa wakati unaostahili. And whenever she doesn't do it perfectly then he will get angry. Na sasa kama hawezi kufanya hivyo mimi huwa nakasirika. Now he was not aware he was angry and he was not aware 
was a sin. Na yeye hakuwa nagundua kwamba umekasirika na hakuwa nagundua kwamba ukasirika ni dhambi. He just thought my wife was was wrong so I got angry. Yeye alijua tu mke wangu ametenda makosa na lazima nikasirike. So he let his anger control him. Kwa hivyo akaacha ile ashira ni iliyo kuwa na kuongoza. But when we grow with Jesus, lakini tunapokuwa katika Kristo Yesu, we ask why am I angry? Unauli unajiuliza kwa nini nimekasirika? So do I expect my wife to know when I'm coming home? Jo, je, ninatarajia mke wangu aijue masaa ambayo anarejea? And then she has everything ready for me. Na sasa anaandaa kila kitu kwa ajili yangu. So I expect my wife to do everything for me. Je, ninatarajia mke wangu anifanyie kila neno? So is it right or not? Je, ni vizuri ama ni vibaya? So first she is become aware of his feelings and the reasons why. Kwa hivyo jambo la kwanza ni wewe kujua hisia zako na ujue ni kwa nini hisia zako ziko hivyo. The reason why he was angry. We ajue ali ni lazima ajue ni sababu gani alikuwa. And the second service it is destructive. Na ya pili tumesema kwamba ni aribifu. When he had angered toward his wife, kama yeye amemkasirikia mkewe, his wife would feel hurt. Mke wake atasikia kwamba ame <coughs> ameumizwa the wife found it painful to relate to him na sasa huyu huyu mke anapata ni vigumu sana kuwa na uhusiano na yeye it hurts the family hili jambo linaumiza familia yake it zima. hurts the ministry na pia inaharibu hata huduma it makes life painful inafanya maisha yanakuwa na machungu and it hurts the relationship with god na sasa hii pia inaharibu uhusiano na mungu so we all need to understand any sin will destroy a whole person ni lazima ujue kwamba dhambi yoyote ile ndogo itaharibu maisha yako yote. In my ministry even when I go to different countries. Katika huduma yake anapotembelea mataifa mbalimbali. When I try to communicate with some pastor about the arrangement. Anapojaribu kuzungumza na wachungaji wengine kuhusu mipangilio za mkutano. Sometimes I found that some people get angry easily. Wakati mwingine amekuja kugundua kwamba wachungaji wengi wao wanakasirika mapema. Now for me is to say it doesn't matter if he's angry. Wake yeye anasema haijalishi hata kama anakasirika. I'll stay calm. Mimi nitabaki nimetumia. I'll explain it clearly. Na mimi nitaendelea kumweleza. And then I'll find out you what is he unhappy about. Na pia ataanza kutafuta kujua kwa nini huyu mchungaji amekuwa na hasira. So instead of letting my emotion affect me, badala ya ku ya kuacha hisia zake zikamuongoze I become aware of his anger yeye anatambua kwamba yule mchungaji amekasirika I become aware of my reaction na sasa nina anakuwa na ufahamu anaweza kufanya nini and I know it's destructive na najua kwamba hili jambo linaweza likaharibu and then number three. na tatu what does the bible say biblia inazungumzia nini the bible says be peaceful biblia inasema kwamba kuwa na amani Be kind to people. Uwe mtu mwema kwa watu. Work harmoniously. Mfanye mambo katika umoja. And listen to people. Na ukawasikilize watu. And overcome wickedness with goodness. Na sasa ukashinde uovu kwa uzuri. And when we obey God's law is always beneficial and is always good. Tunapotii sheria ya Mungu ina faida na ni nzuri. Now Remember when I emphasize God's love it doesn't mean I say God's law is not important. Kumbuka ninaposisitiza kuhusu upendo wa Mungu ujue kwamba sisemi kwamba sheria ya Mungu ni mbaya. I just said God's love is the greatest motivation. Nasema kwamba sheria ya Mungu ndicho kipengele kikuu cha kutochea sisi. God's law is a secondary motivation. Lakini sheria ya Mungu ni ya pili si ya kwanza katika kutochea sisi. And the motivation is to obey the law of God. Na kuchochewa ni kwamba tutii sheria ya Mungu. To love God and love people. Ili tumpende Mungu na tupende watu. Be kind to people. Tuwe watu wema kwa watu. To bless people. Tuwabariki watu. So whenever the Bible reminds me yes to forgive, I will choose to forgive. Kwa kwa hivyo Biblia inaposema kwamba usamehe ni lazima tusamehe. And then number four, ya nne, we need strength. Tunahitaji nguvu. So we pray to change our heart. Tunaomba ili basi tukabadilishe mioyo zetu. Sometimes we might be angry. Wakati mwingine tunaweza kasirika. We think it's unfair. Tunafikiria kwamba sio vyema. They did something bad to me. Na kwamba amenifanyia jambo baya. It's natural for me to be angry. Kwa hivyo ni ni uasilia wangu 
kuwa na asira. kusema kwamba ni ngumu kusamehe. So we pray to God. Tunamuomba Mungu. And we think of Bible passages that help us. Na tunaanza kufikiri kuhusu mistari ya kibiblia inayotusaidia. When Jesus was on a cross, Yesu alipokuwa msalabani, he prayed for those who crucified him. Aliwaombea wale waliomsulubisha. And forgive and God forgive our so many sins. Na Mungu kwa kweli amesamehe dhambi zetu nyingi sana. So God can forgive my numerous sins. God forgive my numerous sins, my many many sins. Mungu amesamehe dhambi zetu nyingi zaidi. So I want God to count the sins of other people. Kwa hivyo pia ninataka Mungu aendelee kusamehe dhambi za watu wengine. And I want to forgive na pia ninataka kusamehe. And then number five, na ya tano, we choose to obey. Tunachagua kutii. Now the 